Today we will review the IHE Vital Records Profiles, Birth and Fetal Death Reporting Enhanced, BFDRE, and Vital Records Death Reporting, VRDR. I'm Lori Reed Forcat, consultant with eHealthSign, and I've been working in collaboration with Elena Elliott, who's an IT specialist for the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention at the National Center for Health Statistics. Hi, I'm Elena Elliott with NCHS. Um, this first slide describes the problems that currently exist with vital events reporting. Vital events reporting includes demographic, medical, and geographic data, which comes from birth certificates, death certificates, and fetal death reports. But the current process requires multiple methods of data exchange between the EHR, the Jurisdictional Vital Records Office, and the National Statistics Agency. And that can mean dual data entry, multiple interfaces, and it can be labor-intensive, costly, error-prone, and can result in issues with timeliness and the quality and usefulness of these data. The National Vital Statistics System is the oldest and the most successful example of intergovernmental data sharing in public health, and the shared relationships, standards, and procedures form the mechanism by which NCHS collects and disseminates the nation's official vital statistics. These data are provided through contracts between NCHS and vital registration systems operated in the various jurisdictions legally responsible for the registration of vital events, including births, deaths, and fetal deaths. So the Division of Vital Statistics is one of the divisions within NCHS, and we've been collaborating for a number of years with the National Association for Public Health Statistics and Information Systems, known as NAFSIS, along with state representatives and EHR and vital record system vendors and standards development organizations such as HL7 and IHE to support an eVital standards initiative. And the goal of this initiative is to develop and implement national standards to support interoperability among uh, the providers and the jurisdictional vital records agencies and NCHS because we want to improve the timeliness and the accuracy and the completeness of the birth, death, and um, fetal death records and to promote standard metrics across all the jurisdictions and the national vital statistics system. So in this use case scenario on the right side of the slide, um, this scenario provides for the flow of data, uh, vital records data from the provider to the jurisdiction and then the bidirectional flow from the jurisdiction to the national agency. And then finally, in the case of death reporting, it shows the coded cause of death and race and ethnicity codes flowing back to the jurisdictions. And this example of com a complete bidirectional flow of vital records data using HL7 and IHE standards is currently being piloted in the U.S., but it's important to point out that this is also applicable to international use. For the technical solution, we have multiple approaches to convey the vital records information from the provider to the jurisdiction and round trip between the jurisdiction and the National Vital Statistics Agency. At the top of this slide, we see the content creator, which shares a CDA document reporting either the death or the birth or the fetal death report um, between these entities. And at the bottom, we see the information source sending uh, an HL7 v2.6 message to the information recipient. Um, within the messaging are multiple options which are designed to constrain the information for what is needed between provider and jurisdiction and jurisdiction to the national as well as coded cause of death and coded race and ethnicity returned from the national entity to the local jurisdiction. In the middle, we see the uh, form filler and uh, the form processing, form manager, etc. Uh, this form space data capture utilizes for death reporting a MS VR DR um, that is designed as a medical summary that has the death information. The labor and delivery summary is used for pre-populating the birth and fetal death report. The labor and delivery summary, of course, has information about both the mother and the baby, which is used to extract the data needed to report the birth or the fetal death. Uh, that form space data capture uh, toward the right side, the form processor CDA exporter, form receiver CDA exporter, and similarly form processor message exporter and form receiver message exporter. These uh, leverage those same CDA document approaches or message-based approaches 
uh, to continue that information flow between the provider and jurisdiction and jurisdiction round trip to the um, national agency. On the left-hand side is some of our newer approaches using FHIR. So we have a data consumer which is able to go after a data responder for that same source information for both the vital records death reporting as well as the birth and fetal death reporting um, designed as a query for the resource. This slide highlights how the FHIR-based transactions identified in the previous slide can be coupled with the MRFD approach for forms-based data capture. In this case, instead of pre-populating the forms using CDA documents, the form processor or form manager is grouped with a data consumer and uses the FHIR-based transaction to query the clinical system as a data responder and retrieve the source vital records information, particularly the clinical information, that will be conveyed in the CDA document, HL7 messaging, or native forms retrieval as identified in the previous slide. So the technical solution for the vital records death reporting conveys the death reporting information using either the pre-population of data, using a medical summary for the, uh, from the EMR to the jurisdiction, it enables messaging between the provider and jurisdiction and it bidirectionally between the jurisdiction and the National Vital Statistics Agency. It allows for a CDA death report between the provider and jurisdiction or from the jurisdiction to the national entity. And it also allows for a fire-based query for the provider supplied death reporting information. The VRDR also supports the WHO verbal autopsy report. For the birth and fetal death reporting enhanced, this similarly conveys birth and fetal death reporting using pre-population of data, in this case with a labor and delivery summary from the EHR to the jurisdiction. It also enables pre-population of data using FHIR to retrieve the content from the EMR using MRFD as identified previous slide. And it enables messaging between the provider and jurisdiction bidirectionally with a national entity um, and the CDA report of birth or the CDA report of fetal death between the provider and jurisdiction and the jurisdiction and the vital National Vital Statistics Agency. Uh, this one supports the WHO statistics for prenatal data, labor and delivery data, and newborn fetus data. So this slide shows uh, five of our state partners that we've collaborated with um, in eVital standards pilot testing. CDC slash NCHS Division of Vital Statistics in collaboration with the National Association for Public Health Statistics and Information Systems, known as NAFSIS, uh, other state representatives and other vital record stakeholders um, have worked together to develop vital record standards to advance our mutual goal, which is to enable interoperable uh, electronic data exchanges for vital events reporting. And NCHS supports uh, and, and really encourages state uh, pilot testing and trial implementation because we want to help promote the refinement and adoption of eVital standards-based interoperability. So the value proposition for public health is pretty evident because um, the coded information can be um, disseminated in near real time and that will be great for epidemiology, for surveillance, and for um, early detection and early intervention. In the case of providers and, and the EMR systems, there'll be improved quality of care, improved efficiency of reporting, um, reduced cost, and leveraging FHIR um, uh, will be able to provide more specific and up-to-date vital events reporting information to public health and public safety partners in a coordinated, consistent, and secure way with the ability for data providers to get more out of the data that they collect. So in summary, this last slide just highlights the value of establishing the uh, interoperable electronic exchange of vital records data between EHR and the jurisdictional vital records offices and the national vital record systems. We believe that this will promote more timely data release, um, higher quality for demographic epidemiologic uh, surveillance and research, 
improved efficiency for electronic exchange of vital records information, greater integration with other stakeholder electronic systems that might want to use this data, um, greater standardization of electronic vital records data collection and exchange, and finally, it'll promote consistent statistics between the jurisdictions and the national vital records offices. So thank you all so much for your attention, and we look forward to working with the implementer of the implementers of these vital records profiles. Thank you. Have a great day.